Hello, I am one. Uh, today we're going to be talking about compound inequalities. Uh, this is a follow-on to uh, the lesson on inequalities that you've uh, learned how to uh, solve and graph. So um, to, in, in compound inequalities there's now going to be uh, two statements and therefore two boundaries uh, to compare to and you'll see what I mean as we get into this. Uh, so let's go ahead and start by defining compound inequality. As we define compound inequality, um, we're talking about two simple inequalities that are joined by the words and or or. Here are two examples. So in the first example here, you have uh, negative 2 uh, is less than or equal to x and is less than 1. So notice the two boundaries. You've got negative 2 and you've got 1. And we're talking about all the values of that can be x that are equal to negative 2 or greater than negative 2 and less than 1. And notice because I can say the word um, and that uh, that that both boundaries in the same statement are paid attention to. So all real numbers that are greater than or equal to negative 2 and less than 1. Notice I can break these up into actually saying it this way too. Negative 2 is less than or equal to x and, and I can put that word and in between, x is less than 1. So that's why we say and. Now take a look at this other one. Um, x is less than negative 1 or x is greater than or equal to 2. Now notice this one, you really can't even say and by looking at the picture because there is no number that satisfies um, both parts of what we're talking about here. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is, is that if I'm looking at numbers that are less than negative 1, we're talking about all these right here. Or we're talking about or, and notice I said the word or, or we're talking about numbers that fit into the right hand side over here where we're either equal to 2 or greater than 2. So we say then all real numbers that are less than negative 1 or greater than or equal to Two. Now, I don't have to even bother trying to separate them into two statements because they are two separate, separate statements already and they just simply, um, you know, they, they remain that way um, by the way that they are designed. So how is this different from simple inequality? I'll let you think that for a bit. Well, isn't that the case that in simple inequality, we only draw really one side, uh, while um, notice that there are two boundaries or two numbers that are involved um, it, that we're comparing to. And we're either between those two numbers or we're outside the, the boundaries of those two numbers. Okay, I hope that helps. And so let's uh, take a look at the first example, solving an and compound inequality. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. Now I want you to understand something. As we're working these things, we can actually do to all three parts what we do, what we used to do to both sides of an inequality. And here's what I mean by this. Notice if you look at this that we've got in the middle of the statement, and, and let's just go ahead and read the whole statement first. The whole statement says negative 2 is less than or equal to 3t minus 8, and that is less than or equal to 10. Now, um, 3t minus 8 is, is what we're trying to work, and we're trying to get t all by itself. And so we're gonna just, just going to use the same things that we've been doing in algebra uh, to do this. And so we're going to add 8 to everything is the first step. So we're going to add 8 here, add 8 here, and we're going to add 8 here. And we can do that all simultaneously. So uh, negative 2 plus 8 is 6, less than equals. I end up with 3t because negative 8 plus 8 is 0. 
and I can go less than or equal to 10 plus 8 is 18. All right. Now I said that I can do the algebraic moves to all three parts all at the same time. So we have to do divide by 3 in order to get t by itself. We're going to divide by 3 on the left hand side here and divide by 3 on the right hand side. 6 over 3 is 2. 3 over 3 is 1, so that just cancels and leaves behind the t. And then less than or equal to 18 divided by 3 is 6. And so there we have it. Now this says, uh, if it doesn't say to graph it, but if we wanted to graph it, we could do it this way. We're talking about 2, and we're going to put a filled in bubble right there. And t then represents all the way to 6. So we fill in the bubble all the way there because of the equals. We've got less than or equal to and less than or equal to. And t is everything that makes that bar true right there. Okay, moving on to example two. Solving an or compound inequality. Now notice this one has just basically two uh, simple inequalities that we have to solve. So let's just go ahead and get to work and start to solving these um, because they're always going to be separated by the or. So let's start with the first one. The first one says 2x plus 3 is less than 5. So we're going to subtract 3, subtract 3 from both sides. It cancels it out over here and ends up with 2. And we end up with 2x then is less than 2. When I divide by 2, I end up with 2 canceling out and 2 canceling out and becoming 1. So x is less than 1. So we know where x is less than 1 is. Um, but now we have to work the other side here. The other side says, and or 4x is uh, minus 7 is greater than 9. 4x minus 7 is greater than 9. We have to add 7 to both sides. Um, that ends up being 16 on the right. And 4x and divide by 4. And we end up with x is greater than 16 over 4 is 4. So x is greater than 4. Now notice this is a statement that we cannot, because we can't be and, it can't be true for both of these. It can't be less than 1 and greater than 4. And then the, the graph that we draw draws the picture of the reason why. If we put 0 right here and put 1 right here and put 4 over here, um, we'll show you how the graph looks. So we're talking about all the values greater than 4. That's going to be off to the right over this way. We're going to be talking about all the numbers that are less than 1. And there it is. And so notice it could either be over here, or it could be or. Notice I said or. could be over here, right? So that's, that's how that works uh, for example 2. All right, example three has some words to it, so let's go ahead and read these things. It says you have, an add, you have added enough antifreeze to your car's cooling system to lower the freezing point to negative 35 degrees C. The coolant will remain as liquid, uh, as a liquid as long as the temperature C in degrees Celsius satisfies the inequality that C has to be greater than, or, and, and I'll say it this way, that negative 35 is the, the least that it can be, and C has to be greater than that, and has to be less than 125 degrees. Write the inequality in degrees Fahrenheit. So here's this inequality right here. And uh, we know from Earth sciences that we've learned that uh, something in degrees C can be calculated if I took 5 ninths of Fahrenheit divided by, or subtracted, subtracting 32. So if I took the Fahrenheit value and subtracted 32 as a, as a conversion from degrees uh, Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius, um, I, can, I can find Fahrenheit. So this one's going to take a little bit of work, but, but what we can do now is since C is equal to that right there, we can just go ahead and place, replace C with what it's equal to. So we can write 5 ninths times the Fahrenheit minus 32 and uh, do 125 on the right there and has to be greater than negative 35 
uh, degrees. So now we're going to we're going to calculate the Fahrenheit value, and this is where this kind of math actually um, becomes very practical. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to take care of the multiplication. And we're multiplying by 5 ninths, and so I'm going to multiply both sides by 9 fifths in order to get that fixed. So 9 fifths, 9 fifths on the right, and 9 fifths on the left. Now, that cancels 9 with 9 and 5 with 5, and so that just leaves the Fahrenheit minus 32 by itself. And now we just have to uh, do the math to resolve these. Well, negative 35 divided by 5 is 7, negative 7, and negative 7 times 9 is negative 63. And then on the right-hand side, uh, 5 into 125 is 25, and 25 times 9 is 225. And, um, and let's see. Now, the next thing that we have to do is add 32 to both sides. And if I add 32 to both sides, that's really subtraction, right? Because we have negative 63 plus 32, so we just subtract. Uh, 3 minus 2 is 1, 6 minus 3 is 3, and 63 is greater than neg uh, 32, and it's negative, and so it becomes negative 31. Less than, equal to... Um, Fahrenheit is all by itself now because we added 32 to negative 32 and we have to be less than 225. Well, we had to add 32 to that and so that ends up being 257 degrees. So in Fahrenheit, we have to be less than 257 degrees and we have to be greater than and or equal to negative 31 degrees. And so there we figured it out. Okay, last example here. Um, traffic enforcement. You are a state patrol officer who is assigned to work traffic enforcement on a highway. The posted minimum speed on the highway is 45 miles per hour, and posted maximum speed is 65 miles per hour. You need to detect the vehicles that are traveling outside the posted speed limits. So there's a, there's... You can't drive too slowly as well as you can't drive too fast. All right. X is less than 45 miles per hour, or we're going to say X is greater than 65 miles per hour, and that's what we're trying to, de de to detect. So, and now it says rewrite the conditions in kilometers per hour. Well, this is saying... Um, and, and notice my note down in the lower right here. It says if a vehicle is m miles per hour, then the conversion from k kilometers per hour is m is equal to 0.621 k. All right, so we're going to go, uh, we already have our statement here, so we're just going to say uh, instead of x, we're saying m. So instead of m, we're going to say 0.621 uh, K is less than, not equal to, 45, or, and we're going to say the same thing, 0.621 K is greater than 65. And uh, there we go. So we're going to divide everything by 0.621 uh, and div divide this by 0.621 and we're going to find out what the uh, limits for k are. So k is going to be less than uh, 45 divided by 6, 0.621. Got my calculator out here and got 45 divided by 0.621. End up with uh, 72, we'll just call it 72.5. 72.5 uh, kilometers per hour. And then uh, for the other one, we're going to divide both sides by um, 0.621. And we're going to get K is greater than 65 divided by 0 0.621, 104.7. 
And so the answer is, we're looking for cars that are in, in kilometers per hour driving slower than 72.5 kilometers per hour or faster than 104.7 kilometers per hour. And there that is. I've attached a homework sheet to this uh, lesson. And uh, so do the homework problems from this assignment on a separate piece of paper and take a photograph of it and send it in. And if you need help, Hey, give me a call or, you know, just send me an email and you and I can uh, get together and work it out. If uh, you have several people uh, want to get together, I'm happy to meet with you and work these things out. All right. That's it. Good luck on your homework.